Okay, welcome. This is a, this will be an extremely comprehensive review. Um, I'll do this in two parts for your chapter one test. The problems, these model the problems on the chapter one test very, very closely. Um, so if you are comfortable with the material here, you should be in great shape on this test. Um, I'm going to try to do my work in blue and my solutions in red just to clear things up. So if you want to fast forward and you want to come back and you're trying to read through my work, what was the final answer? That should be in red ink. Okay, um, write an equation for a line that passes through the point 42 and has a slope of, of 3 fourths. If we were just going to do this and not have to write in slope intercept form, I would write this in point slope form. And that would be y minus our y coordinate of the point it passes through equals slope 3 fourths times x minus the x coordinate minus 4. But we have to complete this in slope intercept form. That's just another way of saying let's solve it for y. So I get y minus 2 equals distribute 3 fourths x, this is nice, minus the 4's cancel, 3. And all that's left is to add 2 to both sides, and I get y equals 3 fourths x, add 2, add 2, negative 1. So first page of the test, or at least first few problems that we're going over on the review, um, this dates back to probably 8th grade math for you. Okay, find an equation of the line in slope-intercept form again. I like underlining those just to remind myself I might not be done until I, until I get to that point. Um, we've got two given points, so I'm going to find our slope first. The y's change from 4 to 2 as the x's change from negative 3 to 1, giving us a slope of 2 on negative 4 or negative one half. At which point, you can do this in slope intercept the rest of the way. I'm going to go point slope. Y minus, I'm going to use this coordinate, Y minus 2 equals slope negative one half times X minus the X coordinate 1. I get Y minus 2 equals negative one half X plus one half. We're way beyond the point where we should be making that mistake of not distributing the negatives. And now I just have to add 2 to both sides. So slope intercept form, I get y equals negative 1 half x, add 2, add 2, either plus 2 and a half or plus 5 halves. Okay. Find the equation for vertical and horizontal lines through the given point. Um, a vertical line has a fixed x value. If, if you're not confident with that, you can go ahead and draw a quick sketch of it. No big deal. Negative 3, negative 7 down here. And we've got our vertical line passing through that. And we notice no matter where we go on that line, we are always left 3. So x equals negative 3. And hold on, let me lock in my zoom here so we're not zooming in and out all the time. Apologies horizontal line has a fixed height. So again, if I was going to graph that down here, negative 3, negative 7, no matter where I go on this line, all of the points are down 7. So I've got y equals negative 7. So final answers, y is negative 7. You wouldn't, of course, have to write these again, but I said I'd put final answers in red. Find an equation for the line through the given point and parallel to the given line. Well, if I'm parallel to a line, I know that I have the same slope. But I can already say this is going to be y minus 2 equals some slope times x minus the x-coordinate. I've got 2 thirds of point slope form done. When I solve this for y, I would subtract 2x. You can do this in one step if you like. I would divide negative 3. But what I'm looking for is my slope. So solve for y. 
y minus 2 is 2 thirds x. 3's cancel, minus 2, add 2 to both sides. If we're in slope intercept form, which we're supposed to be, y equals 2 thirds x. No problem. Number five, same problem except now we are perpendicular. Perpendicular slopes have opposite reciprocals, so we want our slope to be the opposite reciprocal of negative three halves, so that is positive two thirds. Point slope, y minus the y coordinate equals slope two thirds times x minus the x coordinate, negative one, so that is plus one y minus 2 equals 2 thirds x plus 2 thirds. Add 2 to both sides and we have y minus, oops, y equals, excuse me, 2 thirds x either plus 2 and 2 thirds, which is fine, or plus 6 thirds to both sides plus 8 thirds. So our first page, definite review from many years past, and you've been doing that each year. Okay, sketch a complete graph, give domain and range in both set builder notation, um, which we'll definitely be talking about. It's the first time we're going to look at that, but we're going to be we're going to be using set builder notation uh, quite a bit along with interval notation. Rewrite as a piecewise function, list x and y intercepts as coordinate points if they exist provide at least four quality points in the t-chart. So I'm going to come down to the provided t-chart. The function we're looking at is 2 times absolute value of x minus 3 plus 3. Absolute values make things positive. If x is bigger than 3, this is just an equation of a, of a line with slope 2. If x minus 3 is less than 0, though, it comes out as the uh, absolute value is the opposite, and the opposite would give us a line with slope negative 2. But if we're going to choose some t-chart points, for sure we should build around when the absolute value is 0. That's when interesting things happen. So I'm going to choose x is 3. I get 2 times 0 plus 3, 3. Then maybe I'll go to 4, because I know it's going to just look like a line. That's 2 times 1. 2 plus 3, 5, maybe out to 5. I get 2 times, this becomes 2, 4 plus 3, 7. And maybe I should go to the left of 3, say 2. And I get 2 times, negative 1 becomes positive 1. 2 times 1, 2 plus 3, 5. And then I'm going to go to 0. You could put 1 in here. I'm going to go to 0. And I get 2 times this, the absolute value of negative 3, 3. That's 6 plus 3, 9. So remembering those points, if you've jotted those down, I'm going to transfer those to our graph. So our graph, we have a point at 3, 3. That was our first point. That should be our most interesting point. We have a point at 4, 5. We have a point at 5, 7. And I know this looks like a line as we continue on because absolute value x minus 3 is not going to change to the right of 3. Okay. Our values aren't going to change from positive to negative. So my next point on there was 2, 5. And I have another point, 0, 9, which we can see mirrors this point over here. If I'd have added that on, I'm certain I have a point here. It's linear. And that is our graph. So let's go ahead and, and put our and answer everything that's asked of us here. Let me zoom out here just for a moment so we make sure we have all of that. I can't zoom out that way. I'm going to have to zoom out this way. Excuse me just for a moment. And we'll refocus this guy. Love technology. Okay, give the domain and range. So our domain, in interval and set builder notation, interval notation, domain, 
um, since that we know that this is a line, it's going to go to the left forever, it's going to go to the right forever, and yes, it does exist at 3, so our domain is all real numbers. In interval notation, that would be negative infinity to infinity. In set builder notation, that would be this, this would we would read as a set of all x such that negative infinity is less than x is less than infinity. Um, all real numbers oftentimes um, we wouldn't list that in interval notation <clears throat> or set builder notation. We would just rather say all real numbers. Okay, the range a little bit more interesting. For the range, we scan from bottom to top, and this graph starts to exist when y is 3 or when f of x is 3. So our range, we would say, we could say is y or f of x is greater than or equal to 3 in interval notation that would that would be 3 including 3 bracket up to infinity don't say infinity to 3 it's always bottom to top or left to right for domain and interval notation that would be the set of all y or f of x such that just get used to saying that when you put in the colon, such that 3 is less than or equal to f of x. Or you might want to say f of x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay. Rewrite as a piecewise function. So I know I have places for my domain and range down here, but I wanted to be able to do that next to the graph so you could see what's going on there. So piecewise function. If I'm going to show this two ways, one from the perspective of looking at the graph and one from the perspective of looking down here. Um, first off, I know that interesting things happen around x. So here's the algebraic approach, and then we'll look at the graphical approach to this. If x is greater than or equal to 3, then what do we have? If x is greater than or equal to 3, we're going to graph this. We're going to say, well, if x is greater than or equal to 3, then the absolute values don't matter, and this is just the equation 2 times quantity x minus 3, because the absolute values don't have to turn this into a positive. So this is the line. I'll put it over here. 2x minus 6 plus 3 minus 3. And that is when x is greater than or equal to 3. However, if x is less than or equal to 3, or let's just say less than, so we don't have an overlap, is less than 3, then this function looks like 2 times the opposite of x minus 3 plus 3. Because then if x minus 3 is less than 0, this would be a negative, and we want the positive version because of the absolute value. So let's do this all in one step. I would get a negative x times 2. I would get a positive 3 times 2, 6 plus 3. That's when x is less than 3. Now we could have less than or equal to and strictly greater than in this position, but that is our set, note, set builder notation, f of x equals that. Okay, a little bigger bracket than what was necessary here. Now let's go back up and look at this as from a graphical perspective. This line would continue down at the same rate if I moved to the left, this, this portion of the line, if I, if I drew that in, I'd have a point, I'd have a point, I'd have a point. And we see that that would be on the line slope 2, y-intercept negative 3 slope 2, y-intercept, negative 3, but that only occurs from 3 on. Whereas this line has a y-intercept of 9 and a slope down 2 over 1, negative 2. y-intercept 9, slope negative 2, but that only occurs 
to the left of. Okay, so next, let's look at x-intercept. We have none. y-intercept we see is 9. Our domain and range are listed up above. I'm not going to rewrite those. So I guess the point I want to make is we can, if it's lines, we should be able to come up with the equation of lines this way, or we can work the algebra down here. Uh, you have your choice on that. Okay, very similar instructions. Um, this will be a good review of our set builder notation. We're going to give domain and range in set builder notation and interval notation, list x and y intercepts if they exist, and provide at least four quality points in the t chart. So once again, I'm going to go down to our t chart. I'm going to rewrite our equation f of x equals negative 2 plus square root of x minus 4. Now when I have square root functions or logarithmic functions or things where I know I have some domain restrictions, um, a lot of times the first thing I'm going to do is just put in my most interesting value of x. We know that square roots, we can take square roots of positive and zero but not negative, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and just say that we know that x cannot equal, excuse me, we know that x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0, so x has to be greater than or equal to 4. And that is our domain. But it also tells me probably an interesting place to start is when x is 4. x is 4, I get 0. Negative 2 plus 0, negative 2. And then I'm going to make sure I pick good values for x. Like if I pick 7 for x, I get 7 minus 4 is square root of 3. And not, not, nothing against square root of 3, but I'd rather work with integers when I come out of here. So 5, yep, 5 minus 4, 1 is good. So when I choose 5, I get 5 minus 4, 1, negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. 6, I'm not crazy about. Square root of 2, 7, I'm not crazy about. But 8 is good because that gives me square root of 4 is 2, that gives me 0. And then I could pick another value in my t-chart. Let's see, 9, no good, 10 gives me 6, 11 gives me 7, 12 gives me 8. There aren't a whole lot of really good choices after that that are going to fit on our curve, but we're supposed to provide at least four quality points. So when I put in 8, I got square root of 4. My next good root would be to have square root of 9, and x would have to be 13. At 13, I get square root of 9, 3, negative 2 plus 3, 1. So let's transfer those points onto our chart. So I've got 4, negative 2, and that's not any old point. That's our most interesting value of x. I've got 5 negative 1. I jump out to 8 before I'm at 0 and I'd go all the way out to 13 before I'd get to 1. So I've got this it's really half of a parabola, a half of a y squared parabola. If you look at this, if I was going to solve for x, eventually I'd square both sides and I would get y squared. So it's the top half of that parabola. And from that I can see I've got a nice clean x-intercept, 8, 0. My, my graph comes to a screeching halt right here at 4, negative 2. That is not an asymptote. I do not have a y-intercept. My domain, oh, I was going to go red here. My domain as I, as I go from left to right starts at 4 and continues forever. In set builder notation that would be domain x is the set of all x, or my domain is the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to 4. So for our domain all we do is we just we, we write it the way we would have written it before we knew interval notation, but we just put the brackets. That's called set builder notation. For range, the graph begins at negative 2, and it will certainly continue up forever. So my range is negative 2 up to infinity. And I could say either y or set of all f of x such that 
f of x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Let's see if we've got everything there we need. Give the domain, did it, range, oops, set builder notation, interval notation, list x and y intercepts if they exist, provide at least four quality points in the t-chart. And we've got that. Okay, much more of the same. Number eight, sketch a complete graph, give the domain and range in both set builder notation and interval notation, list x and y intercepts as coordinates, a lot of the same. Provide at least four quality points, at least one point must have fractional output, list any asymptotes, label as vertical and horizontal the, the asymptotes. So let's go ahead and start with some quality points. I'm dealing with, keep my formatting the same, f of x is 3 raised to the 1 minus x minus 1. I would start around 1. I would start with an x value of 1. Once again, I would say the myvox, most interesting value of x, is 1 because it makes the whole exponent 0. So when I put in 1, I get 3 to the 0 with 1 minus 1, 0. And then I'm going to build around that a little bit in both directions. When I put in 2, I get 3 to the negative first, 1 third minus 1. 1 third minus 1, negative 2 thirds. And I think I'm probably approaching an asymptote then. I'm going to go in the other direction. I'm going to put in 0, and I get 3 to the first, 3 to the first 3 minus 1, 2. When I put in negative 1, I get 1 minus negative 1, 1 plus 1, 3 to the second, 9 minus 1, 8. Now, what I know about exponential functions, this 3 raised to a power is always going to be 3 to a positive value, 3 to 0, or 3 to a negative value. But 3 to a negative value is 1 on positive 3 to a positive value. I can't get negative values out of here. This whole chunk right here can get close to 0. Therefore, the graph can get close to 0 minus 1, but it can't ever quite get to negative 1. Y can never quite be negative 1, which tells me that is going to be an asymptote. So I'm going to start with that asymptote. Y is negative 1. So we've got, where does it talk about our asymptotes? List any asymptotes. Label is vertical or horizontal. Y equals negative 1. Is this asymptote right here? And that, of course, is horizontal. Let's put some points back down from our t-chart. I've got 1, 0. I've got 2, negative 2 thirds. And I probably could have gone out one more point, but I have a good feeling what's going on here. We're getting sucked into that asymptote. I've got 0, 2 and negative 1, 8, and this was really a nice problem for me with these directions because my intercepts were very, very clean. So let's include, let's start listing some of our things. I'm once again going to put domain and range up here. So our domain, this graph is going to go to the left forever. I mean, it's going to be really high when it gets out here to the left, but it's going to go to the left forever. It goes to the right forever. So our domain is all real numbers in interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. We use parentheses. We can't get there. In set builder, that is a set of all x such that Yep, didn't, I did that again. The set of all x, excuse me, such that you could put negative infinity is less than x is less than infinity. You could put such that x is a real number. Okay. Once again, we just say x is, x is all real numbers. If x is a real number, then we're in the domain. Range, again, more interesting. This graph does not exist until just above negative 1. 
and continues to exist up until infinity, we would say that is the set of all y, or f of x, such that f of x is greater than, strictly greater than, negative 1. And we use the brackets. Okay, give domain and range in both set builder notation and interval notation, did it. List x and y intercepts. Well, my x intercept is 1, 0. That was really fortunate. I didn't have to do much there to find that one. And my y intercept, equally fortunate here, is 0, 2. Domain and range we've got. Let's see. List x and y intercepts if they exist. Provide at least four quality points. At least one point must have a fractional output when written in fractional form. We've got that. Likewise, as I said, I could have gone to 3, and then I would have 3 to the negative second, 1 on 3 to the second, 1 ninth minus 1, negative 8 ninths. And if I put that point on here, you see we're just getting sucked in closer to the asymptote. So we're going to have to be really careful on this to make sure we go back and answer all the questions. List any asymptote, label as horizontal, vertical. Got it. Let's go through one more problem here, and then we're going to going to take a break and start another video. So same thing again. Give the domain and range and set builder notation and interval notation. Um, I'm going to once again. I'm going to come down here. F of x equals log base two of x minus two minus one. And here's where I might be tempted to use my stamping technique that I talk about. And that is I would choose x, I would subtract 2, I take log base 2, order of operations, then I subtract 1. Yep, I'm in red again. Such a good plan. The key here is I want the values after I subtract 2 to be powers of 2. 2 to the 0th, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, uh, maybe 2 to the negative 1st. So we get values that are powers of 2 here. And now I need the exponent that turns 2 into 1. 2 into 2, 2 to the 1st, 2 into 4, 2 to the 2nd, 2 into 8, 2 to the 3rd, 2 into 1 half negative 1. So every log base 2 graph I do would have that guy as a stamp. Once I come out of log base 2, I am to subtract 1. Subtract 1 from 0, 1 from 1, 1 from 2, 1 from 3, 1 from negative 1. But I didn't choose x. I chose x and subtracted 2. To get back to x, I need to add 2. So I get 1 and 2, 2 and 2, 4 and 2, 8 and 2, 1 half and 2. Therefore, my t-chart values could be as simple as, say, start with 3, get out a negative 1, start with 4, get out a 0, start with 6, get out a 1, start with 10, get out a 3, start with 2 and a half, get out a negative 2. I'm going to take those values up to my chart. Before I do that, on a logarithm problem, much like on the last problem, the first thing I'm going to do is say my argument x minus 2 has to be greater than 0. x has to be greater than 2, implying that x equals 2 is our asymptote. So I'm going to take these values and my asymptote at x equals 2 because I can't have log base of 0. And I'm going to put those points and my asymptote up on the graph. And I probably have more things that, there than I need. So x equals 2 asymptote. x equals 2. And that, of course, is vertical. I have an asymptote. Then I've got a point. I'm just going to put these in the order I put them in the t-chart. I've got a 3, negative 1. 
I've got a 4, 0, I've got a 6, 1, and I go out to 10 before I get up to 3. I also have 2 and a half, negative 2. Those are pretty darn good points for me. I see that I have a nice clean x-intercept at 4, 0. I knew that from my t-chart. I see that I have no y-intercept. Let's see, I actually have room here to put my domain in range and you can still see the graph. My domain, as I scan from left to right, begins to exist just after 2. That's confirmed right here. I mean, there's my domain. So just after 2 continues to infinity. Set builder notation, the set of all x such that x must be bigger than 2. My range exists from negative infinity to infinity. Interval notation. And we've got that fitting in there. The set of all f of x or y such that f of x is a real number. And let's see, I think there may be one more thing I need to do. I've got my asymptote listed above. I should probably write it down here for the greater of the test. Again, I put those up here eventually, initially just um, out of a convenience so we could see the graph and I didn't have to zoom way out. So I would just do x equals 2, and that is vertical. And let's see, I think there's one other thing to do. List x and y intercepts. So let's go back. Domain, range, set builder, and interval. Rewrite the logarithm in exponential form. To do that, I'm going to call this y equals log base 2 x minus 2 minus 1. Um, this is an exponential, and I want to solve this guy for x. Or, excuse me, this is logarithmic. To make it exponential, I solve for x. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 1. Then definition of logarithm says this is an exponent that turns 2 into x minus 2. Well, this is at y plus 1. So y plus 1 is the exponent that turns 2 into x minus 2. So if I solve this for x, I get x equals 2 to the y plus 1 plus 2. Should have written above in blue. Now some people will do this, and then they'll choose values of y to get values of x in order to create their chart. Um, I know that we not, might not be as comfortable with logarithms yet, and that's truthfully one of the reasons I would like you to do this this way, but we, but trust me, we would get these same values out. For instance, if I put 0 in for y, I get 2 to the 0 plus 1, 2 to the first 1, so 2 to the first, excuse me, 2 plus 2, 4. If I put, let's say, 3 in for y, I get 3 plus 1, 4, I put, I get 3 plus 1, is this a good point down here? 